Okay, let's get this out of the way. Army of the Dead is not good. It's, it's in fact very, very bad. I appreciate a passionate fan base. I myself am a fan of movies and I like to defend the ones that I love. I, however, have never seen such passion around one director before. I believe one of Zack Snyder's early works, maybe his first big screen debut, was the remake of Dawn of the Dead. I have nothing but praise for Dawn of the Dead. The fast pace, the believable characters, the realistic scenarios, I mean, zombies, all things considered, the, the cool effects, the practical situations, it's all done so well. How is this the same director? Let's just get into this. Scott Ward is the main character. His daughter Kate is the worst thing to ever exist in cinema. I don't think I've ever hated a protagonist so much in my entire existence. Kate sucks. No disrespect to the actress, she's beautiful. She's certainly acting. You know, I, I, I believe she could make me like her in a different film. It's not this one. And that's entirely because of the piss poor script. We're gonna do spoilers in a little while, so I'm just gonna get through this fast for those that don't want any. Um, the movie's two and a half hours long, could easily have been cut down by 45 minutes. There are several subplots that are trash. They don't have anything to do with the main storyline. They do nothing but hinder the plot progression. There's characters that are introduced and seemingly main characters that later amount to basically one-dimensional nobodies. This was marketed as a heist film, yet there is very little heisting going on. The planning consists of dropping these people into Las Vegas to shoot a bunch of zombies and then pick a vault lock. That's, that's the entire heist. There's no like A through G planning. This isn't Ocean's Eleven. The plot in a nutshell is the US government was transporting a super secret thing and it gets destroyed by a car. Oh God. The front of the car crashes into this high tech industrial grade military vehicle, which then sends it exploding into the air. That's enough to not only throw this thing onto the ground, but also somehow unlatch the door and open what's inside. Here come the inevitable, it's a popcorn flick comments. I don't want to hear it. You can turn your brain off and have fun watching a stupid Fast and the Furious movie. You get what you paid for. I paid for a cool zombie heist movie with characters that I thought would do awesome things. That wasn't the case. It turns out what they were moving was Patient Zero a zombie-esque creature from Area 51. I say zombie-esque because this guy isn't your typical zombie. Now he can move fast, he has super strength, he can jump far. He's basically the zombie from I Am Legend without the fake CG jaw opening animation. I'd be remiss if I didn't point out this military outfit was about the dumbest set of people I've ever witnessed. They're so casual with moving this thing. Even when they get the call to evacuate, the guy's just like, eh, hey guys, we're, I guess we're supposed to head out. Oh really boss, we should? We shouldn't just stay here with our guns pointed at this? We should leave? Is that what they said on the phone? Yeah, they were pretty serious about it. They said, get out of there now, leave, it's over. Uh, but what are you guys looking at? What's over there? After a slaughter fest, the zombie makes its way to Vegas and the rest is history, meaning everyone dies and becomes zombies. Las Vegas is now foreign territory, no longer part of the US. They've boarded it all up with freight containers and they're just gonna let these zombies, I guess, just you know, rummage around, forage for scraps, just lumber like idiots until they can nuke the place in a few more days, which is the decision they ultimately come to because you can't parachute guys in or the zombies will just eat them. And you can't hit them with drones because zombies will eat them? And you can't shoot missiles in because zombies will eat the missiles? But later they send a ragtag group of like 12 people in and they kill a lot of zombies pretty easily. This plot doesn't add up at all. To make dumb even dumber, they have a perimeter right outside of the containment unit for, I guess, illegal aliens? People that don't have homes? You couldn't station these guys like 10 miles out? 
Is it because that's not part of U.S. soil, so like this little bit of room on the outside is is technically okay for them to be? I just I don't understand the logic of any of it. <laughs> this is such a shit show. The heist takes place because while the events of Vegas were happening in real time, there were some heroes that came out of that that saved a lot of people and somehow made it out, uh, you know, by the skin of their teeth, which is a gross expression that I just used. I never understood that expression. I hate it. Scott was amongst those people. And how did the government repay him? By giving him a cushy job flipping burgers for minimum wage. Thankless cowards they all are. So, after, you know, a while of doing that and wanting to kill himself basically every day, Scott gets approached by a multi-million, no, multi-billionaire, I would guess, who has a proposition marked fuck you for him, which is to sneak into Vegas with a crew of his own choosing and break into the guy's own vault to steal the $200 million inside that he was already collecting via insurance. So this is double cash, double prizes. And he's even gonna let Scott keep 50 million of it to disperse as he pleases amongst his team he hasn't created yet because he doesn't actually have like a task force. This isn't Danny Ocean, you know? He's just gotta like find people like on YouTube, which is literally how he finds a couple people. Am I into the spoilers yet or am I still doing like the regular review? Anyway, this movie makes no sense. You cannot really enjoy it from a popcorn standpoint because there's too many slow, dull parts. And even when the action ramps up, it's just not that interesting to look at. Snyder wisely chooses the backdrop of Las Vegas. This would have been an awesome scene for a Vegas shootout, but then unwisely doesn't use Vegas at all. The opening montage is fantastic. It's like five glorious minutes of cool unbridled murdering. There's zombie carnage everywhere. Humans are getting ripped apart. There's an Elvis zombie walking around. The Paris, you know, the, the fake Paris Eiffel Tower goes down. It's all epically awesome. It looks visually stunning and clearly every ounce of the budget went there. And then after that, the casinos are gone. The slot machines show up for maybe two minutes uh, total at the end. There, there's no colorful, vibrant places to go. Instead, it's emotionless browns and grays with characters that have so little to say and do, you'd wonder why they even made it a team film. From one Zack Snyder hater to another, I would skip this movie at all costs and save yourself two and a half hours. Instead, watch Dawn of the Dead almost two more times. It's so much better. It's a great movie. I have to just keep going to get some of this other stuff off of my breast. Th listen, there is so much nonsense, I don't even know where to begin. Anyway, the $5,000 woman goes in. She's friends with Kate. How deep is their relationship? I don't really know. She has a couple kids. I guess that means she's extra special in Kate's eyes since her mom was killed. Scott assembles his team. The script focuses on the ones that are unlikable instead of the cool ones like the pilot who's really funny or the German dude who's mostly used as a punchline even though he's clearly jacked and could kick some ass. The coyote's job is to sneak them in. She accomplishes this by opening a latch and letting them walk in and then not shutting the latch behind them. So they can just kind of go through these storage containers to the other side if they want to. Love when movies do that. Nobody on set thought maybe one of the 12 people could just shut the door behind them. There was one border patrol agent that spotted this and he's a rapey piece of crap. So naturally they have him come along too because the real twist there is they're going to use him as bait, as leverage, to deal with these um, alpha zombies that are patrolling the area. They can't go further in without appeasing the generals. So they sacrifice this guy. Nobody has any qualms about it. They, they don't know his backstory. They're just taking the word of one sketchy woman and, and nothing else. Oh yes, the billionaire dude that for some reason needs $200 million, which he probably makes in a few days time anyways, also has one of his crew members going with them, which definitely means he's gonna screw them over at some point. The best part is everybody on the team knows he is, yet no one thinks to maybe sacrifice him or just shoot him or just tie him up and put him somewhere. No, no, they're gonna let him get up to all sorts of shenanigans, which leads me to one of my favorite moments in the film where they sneak past hibernating zombies. I didn't 
mind this. I thought this was one of the better scenes of the film. Definitely one of the more disturbing moments where they have to just kind of brush past zombies as they sleep standing up. They don't want to make noises. It's intense. It's shot well. And then once you know it, that traitor does some traitoring. He throws a glow stick that they're using for their direction down the other way so that the spicy female follows it the wrong way and gets screwed over. I don't know her name, but I call her female John Wick because she's legit the coolest in the film with her gung fu parts. It's just that part, but that part's awesome. Anyway, she knows he's the one that did it. And after she gets out of there somehow, she's battling all these zombies off while the rest of the team is just standing there watching. She's looking at them and reaching to them for help. Her best buddy's just like, um, no. And Batista's like, we gotta go, we gotta go. And he's like, but, but her. And he's like, nope, she's already dead. And he's just like, oh. And she just keeps shooting people and dying. He's like, oh. And Batista's like, come on, guys, we gotta, we gotta go, we gotta go. And he's like, no. <laughs> Then she's looking at them as she's getting eaten and can clearly talk because she's saying some other stuff, but doesn't think to say, that guy's bad, he killed me. Awesome! This is the part where the rap breaks down. They finally make it to the vault, and Kate, in her infinite wisdom, decides now's the time to go after her friend who's at Olympus or someplace. She just assumes she's there because I think someone made a, you know, an offhand comment. Or no, no, it's because the Alphas dragged uh, the cop raper into that area, so therefore everyone's there automatically, according to Kate. I apologize, I glossed over the part where Scott needs Kate's help getting in. I mean, just looking the other way, really, because they have a bad relationship, and I bet it's gonna get patched up before this is all over, right? He said she could come with as long as she stayed right next to him at all times and didn't argue with him or roll her eyes or act like a psycho bitch, or do stupid things to jeopardize the crew. She goes against all of those wishes instantly. She takes off with a single handgun and the best aim in the business. As later we find her in a hallway, absolutely owning every single zombie that comes her way. <laughs> headshot, <laughs> headshot, <laughs> headshot. Over at the vault, the German guy's trying to figure out how to get past some of the security measures, which are very barbaric, a lot of smashing and dart shooting and bullets whizzing. It's like a, a modern Indiana Jones. You know, but without the charm and visual splendor. Instead, it's just a sterile environment with a couple gray walls and a big vault with a couple spinny knobs. In order to figure this out, he's gonna have to put all of his genius into it, all of his brain power, to sit up there and just listen to the clicks. I don't think that's how vaults work anymore. This is supposed to be one of the most advanced, specialized vaults in all of history. He absolutely adores this thing when he sees the little blueprints of it. He can't imagine anything being made better. And yet it takes him 30 minutes to crack it. 30 minutes. The best part is Scott just found this guy and he's like, I heard you're good at what you do. They've never even met. This whole plan hinges on this dude being good, no, nigh, the greatest ever. I'd be lying if I didn't think that CG animal was cool. <laughs> Kill me, I'm still talking about this film. There's an awesome zombie lion scene where he rips the face off that bad guy and that's pretty much the end of the cool stuff. Things get even more intense though once he starts to crack into the vault because there was going to be a nuke dropping on this place in two days time, but now it's moved up to like an hour and a half from where they're at now. They have like no time to get the money and get out. It's crazy. What are they gonna do to speed things up? They're gonna stand around and talk about their feelings. Father-daughter chats, black dude, German dude chats. Scott evidently had a relationship with one of the women earlier in the film that we don't ever see hardly. Um, she, she reveals that she loves him still, and then she's killed 15 seconds later. Just, just absolutely worthless. 
nothing there for me. Oh my God, there's so much in this stupid movie that I'm glossing over. The, the wife zombie, the wife alpha zombie is pregnant. Zombies can have babies in this. I don't know why. I thought they were supposed to be, you know, just hungry, out for blood. They really are the I am legend type zombies. Anyway, she's pregnant, but she's not gonna have a chance to deliver because they cut her head off. And that's when the true plot, the sinister details are revealed. I'm out of order because the, the bad guy that, that's supposed to do this is already dead in, in my recap. But he cuts the head off of her because the billionaire boss never wanted the money. He wanted the head because the blood, the sweet blood of an alpha is worth so much more than 200 million measly dollars. That's nothing, that's trash. Another big reveal is this isn't the first team that's tried to do this. Other teams have come before them, or maybe it's them caught in some loop that's some endless cycle. There's a lot of deep, complex stuff. It's like Batman v Superman now. It's like, it's like the Justice League black and white edition on HBO Max. So much depth here. Which begs another question of the 70 I had. Why doesn't the billionaire just tell them he wants the head of an alpha? Is that really so much more preposterous or worse than having them think that they're stealing a bunch of money from a vault while trying to avoid the zombies? I feel like this is a more straightforward thing. They could set up a trap or two, lie in the weeds and wait. They went through multiple teams. Does this billionaire not have his own trusted advisors he can take with? At this point in my recap, most of the people are dead. All right, we're just gonna go with that. Most of the people are dead. The, uh, the, the German black dude are fighting the alpha guy down in the hallway. And for some reason, the German guy sacrifices himself and shuts the other guy inside the vault. Why didn't he close the vault with him inside too? There was ample time for them both to go in there like way earlier. They just stood there like deers in the headlights for so long. Would fighting your way down the hallway with all these zombies be better than just shutting yourself in an impenetrable vault? Knowing the place is gonna get nuked and that that vault will probably stay secure. Sure, radiation poisoning is a must, but I think that that's probably better than the alternative, which is dying on the spot and becoming a lifeless corpse, walking around looking for sustenance. Batista's about to get on the chopper, they're about ready to go, when the coyote woman's like, uh-oh, there's the alpha guy over there, patient zero. But look, I stole the head from that bad guy. I swapped it out with, a, with, with like a money counter, or a card shuffler or something. And I kept the head because, hey, you never know, when in Rome, right? Or, hey, this is Vegas. With the stakes being so high, she thought to herself, let me hold the head up and then walk as far away from the helicopter as I can because I also hate living. And I'm gonna let this, this stranger that I just met on the day, let him get away with, with, the, with the pilot. And, 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 and I'm just gonna walk over here instead of, I don't know, throwing the head towards the edge of the roof or just setting the head down and pointing a gun at it and backing into the helicopter. There's just like, there's a, there's a million opportunities to get out of this. Instead of walking against a wall with no scenario where you're gonna live. He throws a pole through her, I couldn't have been more happy because I wanted to do the same thing because of her stupid choices, just in general, in life. Batista has the opportunity to get away when he realizes Kate's in that other building. I, I, might, have, I might be misremembering, I don't care anymore. He, he has the pilot lady land him over on the other side. He gets out, sh shoots a bunch of people, finds her, Alpha dude chases him back to the helicopter, jumps into the helicopter. There's a fight where um, Batista's doing everything and then the other two are just kind of like pouting in the corner. Oh yeah, Kate found, found her friend. She was still alive in the building. She didn't die. The, the Alpha leaves some of them alive just for fun. Like he's just like, I'll get to you later. Maybe in a couple days. I don't know. Well, we'll see. We'll see where things go. You know, I don't know if I'll have time. He bests the zombie, but not before taking a bite himself. Yeah, so sadly, Scott's not gonna make it through this one. But the good news is Kate does. And she's the only one that survives. Even the woman she ran in for initially and ended up getting all the team killed over is now dead in the helicopter. I think we never see the body and she doesn't care to look. She's out, she doesn't care. 
the whole film, all she's wanted to do is get to this woman. And then when she finally has her, she couldn't give two shits about her anymore. Film ends with shocking the guy in the vault getting out. The one dude that thought, yeah, this is probably a safe bet. Actually, he didn't even think that. The German guy pushed him in there. He forced him in. Neither of these dipshits thought to hide in the vault. He gets out. He seems refreshed, even though I, I have to imagine he's got just a, a shit ton of radiation poisoning. Uh, I'll, you know, he's going to die from that slowly anyways, but he's not going to get that far because he gets on a private jet, goes to the mirror, feels sick, and yep, sure enough, he's bit. This is not a, this is not a happy ending. In fact, he's, he's the new patient zero. I don't, well, I guess you can't do that, but he, wh whatever. He's the new catalyst for... What was sure to be another sequel of just amazing, amazing storytelling. I hated this movie. Is it watchable? Yeah, but it's not a fun watch. It's a miserable watch. It's not a turn your brain off popcorn film because those require some sort of uh, happy energy or excitement or amazing wow moments. This doesn't have any of that except for the first five minutes, which is the most emotional stuff in the film. The scene of the mother taking on all those zombies and then cradling her daughter in her arms as they both cry and get eaten. Holy shit, that was powerful stuff, Snyder. Why didn't you end the movie with that character and that daughter? I wanted to follow them. In fact, I feel like that whole intro montage should have been the movie of just Vegas going to complete shit for an hour and a half or two hours. Then we see the colors, we see the lights, we see the sounds. That would have been awesome! God! It's like everything with Zack Snyder these days is one step forward, two steps back. You know? He got his Snyder cut, he got to do his version, but then he adds in all these shitty things in the last half hour of the weird Joker and the and the 13 different credit endings. It just, I, I can't anymore. I just can't anymore. I'm gonna watch Dawn of the Dead. I recommend you do the same. Wow, that was certainly heated and long. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. There's tons of fun stuff here. Also, I'm, I've been told there's a bell that you need to turn on in order to get notified of new videos. It seems like I have all these subscribers yet. Where are they, you know? I don't think they know I'm making videos, so hit that bell for sure. And if you really like what I'm doing, check me out on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies or you can be a YouTube join member right here. There's a, there's a button around there too. All right, take care.